Hello. So, in this video, we are going to be talking about curvature. This is another one of those things that we sort of dive in deep in calculus, so we're aiming for more of the geometric perspective in this case. So, what is curvature? Why do we care? So, it's easy to sort of start out with an example. Let's say you have some money to invest in some company. You're trying to decide between sort of company A and company B, right? So, options A and B. You pull up the recent history of those companies, you graph them out, and you get these two graphs. And the question is, sort of which of these two look like a better investment? Now, it's worth taking a second uh, to sort of look at and realize that these things both start at the same value and end at the same value. But which one would you choose? Which one looks like a better investment? So take a second and sort of think about that, and maybe sort of jot it down or something. But looking at this, right, most people, I suspect, would say, well, option A probably looks like a better bet, right? It sort of has this, even though they, they start at the same value and end at the same value, option A seems like it's sort of taking off for real growth, or option B seems like it's sort of leveling out in some sense, right? Like its growth is sort of peaked and maybe it's not going to grow all that much more. But how do we capture that mathematically? That's the question. Well, unsurprisingly, given the nature of this video, this is where concavity comes in. So concavity is sort of a way of describing the rate of change of the actual change of a graph, okay? So in particular, we sort of look at this as concave up and concave down. So a graph is concave up on some interval if the graph bends upward toward sort of across that entire interval. So not just increasing, but sort of increasingly increasing. It's getting sort of uh, the rate of change is getting bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes. So this would be what that graph A sort of looked like, where it was getting bigger, right? It was increasing, but the rate it was increasing was increasing itself, right? As it was increasing more and more and more as you went. This is a situation where it would be concave up. In contrast, concave down over some interval, this is where the graph bends downward across that entire interval. And this is where, even though it might be increasing or decreasing, but it might be, say, increasing, and yet the amount it is increasing is going down so that it's sort of trying to bend down as it goes. So this would be where that option B sort of looked like, right? Where it spiked up quick, but then it started coming back down again, okay? Now, as a note, there's no reason a graph has to be entirely one or the other. It, these are intervals sort of within a graph. And in fact, where we change position, if we sort of go from concave up to concave down or from concave down to concave up, those are called inflection points. And these have a number of sort of interesting meanings in business and things. Uh, but again, we're sort of not going to dive too deep into the analysis of these things so much as just the geometry of them. So again, this is one of those things, being geometric, that's sort of easiest to see with a picture. So for example, we can have something that is uh, concave up or concave down while it is increasing or decreasing. These things are separate properties and it's sort of important to recognize uh, the sort of one versus the other, okay? So looking here, this thing is concave down. Uh, sorry, this thing is decreasing, but it is concave up right? So it is decreasing over time, right, as it's going, but it is trying to bend upward, right? So if we're sort of going along this thing, along the curve, if it didn't bend, it would just sort of keep going. So the fact that it's sort of trying to bend up and away from its sort of what we would call the tangent line, meaning like the if you had just kept going, it's trying to go to the right and up, that tells you that this thing is concave up, okay? So even though it's decreasing, concave up. Similarly, if we're looking at this thing, this thing is an increasing function, right? It's getting bigger as it goes, but like that option B, right, it starts out sort of spiked high and then sort of levels off. And so here, this thing is concave down because even like if we tried to use the tangent line or if we tried to sort of just see the, the straight line as if it just kept going, instead it sort of bends downward as it goes, okay? So this is concave down even though it's increasing. 
Also worth mentioning that there are times where we have neither, right? So a straight line isn't bending at all. It's a line, <laughs> right? So since it's not bending up or down, this thing is neither concave up nor concave down, okay? All right, what about inflection points? Well, we can have a graph where we have two different parts, right? So if I look at the left part, this thing is clearly trying to bend up. And so on the left, I am concave up. Likewise, on the right, I'm trying to bend down. So to the right, I'm concave down. So where it transitioned between those two, that's an inflection point. So the inflection point occurs at the origin in this case because it's between, right, where it was concave up and then concave down, okay? One last sort of example here. Again, this is all very visual stuff, so examples help. If we're looking at this particular curve, we can ask, okay, where is it concave up? Where is it concave down? Where are there points of inflection? Points of inflection, actually finding these things require calculus, but we can sort of visualize, sort of guess-ish, right? Where, again, harping on this idea that graphs are not precise things, we can say, okay, well, there's probably a point of inflection around where x is negative two because it looks like I'm starting to sort of go from concave up to concave down. Likewise, there's another one sort of close to one where it's sort of bending downward but then bending upward. So we have inflection points at these x values, x being negative two and one, and those are transitioning between concave upness, right, which is at the edges where it's bending upward on both sides. So this thing is concave up from negative infinity to negative two and from one to infinity, and it is concave down between those two parts, right? That's why we get those inflection points. So it's concave down between negative two and one, okay? Now, last but not least, it's sort of useful, instructive, and this is a good thing to try on your own, uh, to find, try to make a graph with certain combinations of these properties, increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. So if we wanted to make one that is decreasing and concave down on the left, and then increasing and concave down on the right, that means that we are sort of going down, but also arcing down even more as we're coming toward the origin or toward the y-axis. And then as we're sort of going to the right of the y-axis, we want to be increasing, but also still arcing downward. So on the left, we're coming in and sort of going down faster and faster and faster until we get to the y-axis. And then as we move to the right of the y-axis, we start out going up really fast, right? But then curving downward as we go so that it's concave down, okay? All right, so what do we do? Well. We introduced the idea of concavity, it's sort of geometrically speaking. So we talked about concave up, concave down, that these things are sort of fundamentally separate from increasing and decreasing. So we can have any combination of those things. But the concavity is sort of how it sort of arcs as it goes, right? Whether it's trying to bend up more as it goes or bend down more as it goes and sort of a uh, motivating, motivating example, right, was that option A, option B investment where they sort of both start and end at the same place, but option A, because it was concave up, looked like it was getting sort of just started before it had like a nice growth spurt, whereas option B sort of had its growth spurt and was leveling off. So it looked like it wasn't going to grow a lot more. And that's because option A was concave up and option, option B was concave down. Okay, so that is that.